Do you ever look at someone and wonder what is going on inside their head? Oh yeah, we're talking about that. This claw is not going to be strong enough. It's a little better. What is up, you sexy YouTube mother lovers? We are back for another episode of Gun Meme Review. Now, we're not going to start out this one with claps like we normally do. Potentially out of respect to the clappy... This is definitely going to be one of the spicier gun meme reviews we've ever done, but it is one of those things the internet's just been on fire about. And uh, if you're offended by anything you see in this video, just remember, we only used about 10% of the memes that I've seen floating around of this, and it was probably the least spicy 10%. The others, I don't think we could get away with showing on YouTube. I actually considered not doing this video at all. There's a lot going on to this one, so I was like, I didn't know how to touch it, because it's technically a Second Amendment self-defense concealed carry case, but the guy who got got was a self-proclaimed libertarian boogaloo boy with an AK-47, who was also marching alongside of a group that is openly al aligned with a communist agenda. A lot to unpack, but the memes were too good, so, oh well, we're going for it. Can't wait to see how many subs I lose. But first, I did want to give a shout out to the guys that help us pay the bills. And this week, it is SDI, or Sonoran Desert Institute. Take it away, past me with the coof. Today's sponsor is Sonoran Desert Institute. I get a lot of guys who ask me, Brandon, how do I get started in the firearms industry? Well, SDI might be a good place to start. It's great for somebody who's had an interest in firearm technology like gunsmithing, firearm repair, shooting sports management, pretty much anything in the gun industry. If that sounds like you, you might want to check them out. They have lots of online classes to make it super easy for you. So if you want to learn more, head on over to sdi.edu for more info. So again, a big thank you to SDI. Without further ado, let's fuck. So for anybody who didn't see this, about two weeks ago, there was a protest in Austin, Texas, where uh, the protesters had swamped the roads, which I pointed out before is not a good idea. Quoting uh, from Painkiller already, that's where the cars are. Anyway, they swarmed the road and they surrounded this one vehicle, I think was trying to blow through the protest because, you know, people have things to do. That's why they get in their cars. They surrounded the guy trying to stop the vehicle. Uh, Mr. Garrett Foster pulls up next to the vehicle, supposedly to get in front of his uh, handicapped girlfriend, but he is holding a Palmetto State Armory AKM. Conflicting reports as to whether or not he brandished it at the motorist, but he definitely had it in low ready in a lot of the photos and stuff that I've seen just around his, uh, his neck on a sling. Audio of the whole thing is pretty much shit, so there's really no way to know if there was an exchange of words or what exactly happened, but homeboy does roll over the driver's side of the car with the AK in hand. Driver doesn't take that too well and extinguishes Mr. Foster. As a little bonus added twist, I believe it came out later that the driver of the car was something like an Uber driver, and he was also an ex-Air Force vet who was also a furry. I can't make this shit up. So yeah, Boogaloo Boy with handicapped BLM girlfriend goes and confronts an ex-Air Force furry in the middle. It's just Austin, what what's going on? Is everything okay? I know Austin, Texas' slogan is keep Austin weird, but can we like suspend that for 2020? Because... I mean, come on. But the real gem of this entire thing is the internet responded with complete sensitivity and understanding. Fuck no, they didn't. The memes were there in like two hours. In fact, at time of recording, if you Google Garrett Foster, the first thing that pulls up in Google suggestions is Garrett Foster memes. So, uh, well, you know what we do here. Let's get down into it. Everybody meet Garrett Foster. His pronouns are was and were. Steal his look. PSA AK, $8.99. AKO you hat, $24.99. Golov.ejoybandana, $12.95. Full brush copper bronze finished casket, $11.99.95. It's actually a nice looking casket. I highly doubt it's that cheap. Garrett Foster, 1990 to 2020. Fucked around, found out. Oh yes, because it goes even better. Turns out he did an interview the same night he was 
patrolling around in the middle of the road with an AK, during which, oh my god, you're talking about famous last words. I mean, if I use it against the cops, I'm dead, and I think all the people that hate us and, you know, want to say shit to us are too big of uh, pussies to stop and actually do anything about it, so. And this is where I personally believe the story about him being a genuinely good guy looking out for everybody's best interest kind of unravels a little bit. The only reason you're not shooting at police right now is because they have more guns and you'll be killed. What a stand-up guy. People who hate us are too big of pussies to actually do anything about it. Reality is often disappointing. And this is where we get into one of the weird multifaceted angles of the whole Boogaloo movement. For some people, it's just a joke and we like wearing Hawaiian shirts and plate carriers and shooting things on the weekends. On a philosophical level, it's more of a stance against government tyranny and saying that there are people out there willing to protect their rights if uh, there's something like a mass gun confiscation or something and people, you know, looking for... That's originally where it started, is if there was a massive gun confiscation in the United States, there would be the Civil War Part Two Electric Boogaloo. Breaking that down, it's a reference to a very shitty sequel that your parents probably watched break into Electric Boogaloo. That's where it came from. For some reason, it seems to have transformed online into a bunch of angsty teenagers uh, who are simping for communists and want to shoot cops. How do we know he wanted to shoot cops? Well, he said the only reason he's not doing it is that, you know, he would also get clapped, which, <laughs> whoops. But also straight from his Facebook page, Three federal officers face permanent blindness after riders shine lasers in their eyes. And they're talking about industrial strength la uh, lasers, the ones that like set paper on fire and shit. He says it's amazing. Somebody points out, nah, don't mess with people's eyesight. Even if they're feds, they're just doing their jobs. Garrett Foster, they're cops. It doesn't count. Interesting when you say people's lives don't count. Because that's how a lot of us feel about communists. And I said some stuff recently on Instagram that people got really up in flames about saying that I was a bootlicker and that he was not a communist, he was a, a boogaloo boy, whatever. And I just wanna be clear, I never said he was a communist. I, I don't believe that he was a communist. What I did say, if you read me a little more clearly, is that he was simping for communists, which is just as bad and quite possibly worse. You see, I've met some communists. I'm sure you've met some communists, they're about 90 pounds soaking wet and can be found at pretty much any Starbucks across the country. Why people in our realm feel the need to simp for those people and go stand arm in arm with something that is so antithetical to anything libertarianism has to offer is beyond me. You mean we shouldn't be standing against the government? No, I think the federal government's very guilty of a lot of unconstitutional overreach. What I'm telling you is that you shouldn't be protesting against the government arm in arm with people who want to eradicate that government and replace it with one that's 10 times worse. Kind of counterintuitive. Western consulting, my face when some fool boogaloo boy sides with the Antifa BLM commie faction. Makes me want to go play New Vegas. The feds won't let us burn down buildings and assault random people. We truly live in a fascist country. Fascism. You keep using that word, but I do not think it means what you think it means. Ah, and of course, the classic. I'm gonna go block traffic. I'm the victim! No, you are your roadkill. When you're surrounded in a vehicle and someone brandishes an AK at you. You know the rules, and so do I! And after the end of Last Gun Meme Review, I have made the determination that every GMR going forward needs a Marty Robbins meme. So here we go. Gunfighter ballads and trail songs. Sergeant Perry, fuck around and find out. Move bitch, get out the way, and more. Keep an eye out for volume two, including Better Dead Than Red. But if I can get real with you guys for just one second, I know things are fucking crazy right now. Everybody wants to be against racism and for the rights of protesters and being able to exercise the First Amendment. But then there's rioters over here, and should we stand with business owners against the rioters, stand with the protesters who are doing it peacefully? It's, it's just a lot of very mixed messaging. And on top of that, we have a global pandemic, and just there's so much crazy shit going on. Murder hornets, if those are still a thing. And what really gets me is that there's a decent chance that this guy might have even seen Gun Meme Review before. So if you're one of the guys out there that is just really kind of confused and not really sure what to think about all this stuff or, or, or feels like they need to get involved, they just don't know where to start. 
start with yourself, man. Before you try solving the world's problems, focus on yourself and I promise you, you'll be happier. Start going to the gym. Ask that girl out. Focus on your career. Go to college if that's your thing. Or get, a, get a plan together for your own life. Because you can't control the world. But what you can control is your own life and where your life goes. That is completely within your power. So you know what? If you just focus on the things that you can control, and then once you have everything in your life squared away, then you can try solving some of the world's problems. We need more squared away people doing that. I promise you, if you focus on yourself and get everything in your own life in order for the next year or two, you will be far, far happier than putting that same amount of energy into the things that you really don't have a say over. Hopefully that came off less as preachy and more like a aside from a cool uncle. So anyway, Lebanon blew up. So, um, holy shit. I'm sure you guys have seen the videos all over the place. This is a horrific accident for sure. So I don't want to make too much fun of it, but from a scientific perspective, from a physics angle, holy shit, can you just look at that? Look at that vapor wave, which is just so much pressure escaping that explosion at one time. The shock wave itself is lined with water molecules in the air, the humidity condensing into a sheet of water vapor around the pressure. That is absurd. Technically not gun related, but it's an explosion. We like explosions and it's basically the stuff that blew up is a, it's a recipe for Tannerite anyway, so I'll allow it. Now, there's a lot of speculation going around as to who the culprit is, if it was an accident, if this was an attack of some sort. It didn't take long for people to find out who was actually behind it. Sam Hyde identified as perpetrator of Beirut explosion. Lebanese police confirmed Samuel Hyde is behind the explosion. He can't keep getting away with this. LMAO, yeet. <laughs> ah, the return of the Davy Crockett. Coming full circle on that cursed gun images which we may or may not be doing another episode of in the next week or two, so keep an eye out for that. But seriously, guys, that explosion, it was absurd. This is the before and after photo. Part of that dock, little peninsula that makes up that dock has returned to nature. Crazy stuff, and I know, again, it's a serious topic because there's very real people that have died in this explosion and uh, a lot of injuries. I don't even think we know the toll yet at time of recording, so very serious stuff, but we had to mention it because this stuff's floating around. Holy shit. I, I, I keep coming back to holy shit. Just look at that. And now for something completely different. When you finally find normal priced ammo. This one's fucked up too because that was a suicide joke. Damn it. That's a Tiger King joke, by the way, for the eight people in the audience who still haven't seen Tiger King. What the fuck did you do with your pandemic time? Yeah, ammo prices have kind of been in the shitter uh, for the last several months, and they're getting worse. Uh, but the good news is, is uh, at the current rate, in the year 2022, I could buy your fucking house with this. So, I'm doing okay. At this rate, you might as well stop carrying a gun concealed anyway, because it's probably fucking cheaper just to give them your wallet and phone. Yeah, they're not just telling you that because the police have to stand down completely because, you know politics. They're actually trying to save you some fucking money. Of course, we have this one. That's not a bullpup. This is a bullpup. If I have to look at that guy one more time, I might actually vomit. Brandon Herrera while talking about gun rights. Brandon Herrera when talking about guns. As you may or may not know by now, I am something of an AK guy myself. I definitely don't want anybody getting the wrong impression. I am not a communist sympathizer by any stretch of the imagination. I have a love for Soviet firearms. I really do. It's probably unhealthy. I love reading about Soviet gun designers. I love just anything that has to do with Russian-made firearms. It, it's how I get my kicks, I guess. Even in the autobiographies of these people, you can definitely read into a lot of the atrocities that happened under the communist government. Mismanagement, just, just really the pure hellscape that was communism in the USSR. From Boogaloo and Chill. Soviet government, Soviet made guns. So if I have a short, sweet PSA for you guys out there, just summing up this whole video, stop simping for commies. Just don't do it, okay? You can think about it, but don't do it.
<laughs> and that is the end of this gun meme review, which I thought was going to be a lot more awkward to film, but I actually started having fun with it. So uh, hopefully you guys did too. If you want to go ahead and head over to the B channel, I will leave a link in the description and in the pinned comment. We will have a video of our time at the decommissioned nuke plant. A lot of fun. And of course, I will see you sexy YouTube motherfuckers in the next video. Thanks. Fuel is my obsession to make the perfect weapon like us put things right to the top. But I can't let you get stuck, get stuck, get stuck, get stuck, get stuck, get stuck. We teased it a little bit last week, and since we have two gun when we blah, 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 nope. uh, of our time in Kentucky, and uh, of course, I, fuck, I fucked that up like three different times, and that just all compounded into an unusable take. Fuck.